everyone. Um, I've been asked by uh, someone to uh, provide a video to show how I get the Hubble palette SHO colours from a one shot colour camera uh, using uh, one of the multi uh, narrowband filters. Um, I used to own a 183C uh, Altair Astro camera and I had a tri band filter and I'd done it with a few um, of the uh, images I'd produced with that. I now actually shoot in mono. Um, but uh, I do get asked about this, so what I'm going to do, uh, just going to make a file there. I'm just going to load in the lights, they're uh, five minute subs. Um, there's 36 of them. I've got master flat here. So I'll just load these details, these this data in and run it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to forward the uh, obviously the, the program when it's running through what the uh, integration so we just get the final bits um, but if you've got uh, a one shot colour camera and uh, you have one of these uh, dual narrowband or multi narrowband uh, filters on here you don't want adaptive airy disc you want to select oh if I can get off of the information you want to select here HA03 color and this will give you a color image uh, with an algorithm that focuses on um, the narrowband parts but so let me just run that through and uh, we'll have a look at what's at the end of that and I'll, I'll pause the video and jump to the end so this is the uh, kind of color image you could end up with uh, just doing that uh, run through um, so to get the narrowband data we need to just separate the files so if we go back into the raw fits and we can just leave this as it is we don't need to make any other changes apart from just selecting just below that uh, HA03 color you got mono and you've got extract HA and extract 03 and we want to do these two so if we just click on extract HA and then literally go back to integrate and just push integrate it'll come up asking you if that's what you want to do and then you just literally click OK to everything and it will now run that through so I'll pause this again and uh, come back to you in a second OK so that's finished running and you can see now that we've got an integration too which gives us the and I basically labeled it HA so I know which file it is. So there's your HA data. Go back into raw fits and then change this now to extract 03 and then go back to integrate and just say integrate and it'll ask you again and then on this part here just label it how you want so 03 and then press OK and let that run through and I'll uh, again pause the video okay that's now run through and this is the O3 data so we got the HA data here and the O3 data here now we're just going to use those two now um, Astro Pixel Processor doesn't do extract sulfur 2 um, I'm not sure if that's something that's going to be added but at the moment it only does the HA and the O3 so we need to go up to the tools section and we just need to combine these uh, these separate narrow band channels so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select SHO and I'm going to say add channel and I'm going to add the O3 and the HA now depending on uh, how they're labeled will depend what comes up here but as I say I've got HA and I want that as hydrogen alpha sometimes it will automatically select it depending on how you've uh, written your files so that will go in there and then the O3, I'm going to put in O3, oxygen 3. And then I'm going to add a third channel. And I'm going to add the O3 again. And I'm just going to put that in to the sulfur 2. Okay. Now, when you uh, <clears throat> press recalculate, it will give you an image. But it won't be quite right. It all depends on your equipment. But I normally find that the uh, oxygen is not strong enough and that needs to be boosted a bit um, and so what we do we just go to the oxygen tab and on the times 
tab at the top here, we just take that to times two. So basically we got, you know, twice as much of this as we have of the sulfur because these are the same, same file. Let's recalculate that. And you can make as many adjustments on here as you see fit. But as you can see there, we've got a little bit more blue shown there and it's, m the stars are much more purple. And if you're getting the purple stars, then you know you're along the right tracks. So that we shall go for. I'm going to save that. And this is the this is the image we're going to work with. Okay, I don't want the video to be too long-winded, so I'm just going to fast forward this bit while I do a rotation and crop uh, the image ready for um, the color changes. Okay, so I've done quite a quick uh, background, uh, remove light pollution. Um, uh, any of you that are eagle-eyed watching the uh, fast forward, you'll notice I rotated the image the wrong way, first of all, by 90 degrees. And then I had to rotate it again, flip it up the correct way. So uh, that's the image we're going to play with. Um, so we're going to go into HSL Selective Color. Now, in this area, this is where we're going to change the colors of this uh, target. And it is very much personal choice. There's three channels that you're really going to concentrate on, which are green, yellow, and cyan. And you'll be doing them in that order. You you do green first, then yellow, then cyan. And you can go through those uh, as many times as you like, iterations. And you'll get changes each time. Although, uh, as you go through them and you repeat, uh, the changes will be more subtle. We start with the green. And what we're looking to do is we're going to be changing, t taking this green out and turning it into more of a yellow. Uh, sort of a, well, we want it as a golden yellow in the end. But if we take the green and we pull and we go on this red cyan and we pull the cyan out and what we also want to do is pull the magenta out, maybe about 30. And then if we press calculate, <coughs> excuse me, you can see there straight away we've got quite a big change and we get already getting that kind of golden colour. After clicking apply, we can then go to the next stage which is yellow. So call up the yellow tab and again we're going to be removing cyan and this time rather than removing magenta and going towards the green we're going the other way now the magenta the more of this you add when you this starts going golden this will make it go more uh, darker so i'll see if i can show you that so as you can see there, it's, it's, it's changed. And if I push the magenta up and press calculate, you see it pushes it really into a dark red. So you can, you can set this to taste. I find around 30 is about, is about right. And if I want it to go darker, I'll just run another, another iteration. So if I apply this, make the changes per, uh, semi-permanent we then go to the cyan tab and on the cyan tab we go down to the blue yellow and we pull all of the yellow out and push it all the way towards the blue and you'll notice the blue here will become a bit brighter there apply and then on the magenta green, we want to pull the magenta out. Go down about 30, 35. And you see it brightened it up a little bit there. Very small change, but, but it does make a difference. So there you can see we've actually got the, the Hubble palette coming through there. And we can run this uh, these iterations through. And if I run, I'll do a very quick run through again. say you don't have to be a hundred percent precise with you know uh, your numbers just you can get you'll get a feel for these uh, but you just remember to go green then do the yellow and then do the cyan I'm just careful I'm just not going to push that magenta up as far because I don't want this to go red 
it, it is a personal choice so it depends how dark you want that <clears throat> some people like it lighter I quite like the dark orange orangey golds I, 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 I quite I quite like them so um, as I say it's very personal um, let's just pull the blue out there sorry the yellow out of the blue that's nice and then pull the magenta and obviously we're pushing towards green and when we add green to the blue that's what gives you that more lighter turquoisey effect so we can keep running through we can also uh, look at saturation levels but what we want to do now is actually create this so when we finished doing all the different levels we can then create a file and then once we've pressed create we can then cancel this and we'll find it at the bottom and call that up and then like I say we can push saturation and we can push the saturation up from here I would take this into Photoshop or Lightroom or PixInsight and I would make further adjustments uh, camera raw is excellent in uh, Photoshop for making nice subtle adjustments but something like Lightroom where you can add a bit more noise reduction and just you know uh, get the contrast up or just adjust the colors a little bit more but that's basically the steps that you need to go through to get um, an SHO palette out of a one shot color and um, yeah that's it if you've got any questions I'm more than happy to uh, to, to uh, answer them or try to answer them as best I can um, so uh, yeah just let me know and uh, I hope the uh, video helps take care